<coughs> okay, I'll record that again. Okay. So what should we appreciate? We should appreciate ourselves. We should appreciate others. And you know, these, these are challenging. You know, if you're really honest, this is quite challenging, right? A lot of people we don't need, we don't want to appreciate. And a lot of the time we don't actually really appreciate ourselves. Listen to your little self chatter. We're actually really critical of ourselves. And so I think, you know, and that leads to a lot of projection, a lot of difficulties in relationships and a lot of um, <coughs> blame and victimhood. Anyways, also Abraham talks about appreciating in advance what then happens. Abraham talks about appreciating contrast. And I'll tell you, that's the hardest thing because I've tried it, I've done it. And it took me, I think, three months time to actually really like, like muscle, like, like train my muscles to appreciate contrast. And now I can actually, I really can tell you if a contrast happens, I appreciate it. I no longer resist it. So Abraham is onto something because whenever I appreciate contrast, the magic formula unfolds, meaning these difficult people or these difficulties, they're just smoothed out because your baseline is appreciation. And when your baseline is appreciation, you're in alignment with source. You're, you're guided from a higher vibration <coughs> because of that. You also attract people that are in a higher vibration and the solutions are already there when you're aligned with source. You're not going to, you know, you know, sink in the problems. What to appreciate? Success. A lot of the time we're focused on failure. A lot of the time we're fearful of failure, thereby we resist our success. So, and what to appreciate? Desire. How many of us can actually appreciate our desire? Very often, you know, to be honest, we're just in fear, doubt, and worry about our desire because why hasn't it showed up, right? Like, you know that uh, Abraham gets a lot of these questions. Abraham, I want my money out of the vortex into my bank. You know, that's actually really another example of people, you know, saying, where's my lover, Abraham? <laughs> so it's really about when you appreciate your desire, you're lining up with your desire. And by doing so, you probably manifest more, you know, opportunities for allowing in your desire. Also, appreciate the well-being of others. Because a lot of people, when they see other success, they feel in scarcity and they start doing one of the seven toxic ways of thinking, meaning they compare and compete with these people. They compare themselves as, oh, I'm so jealous or I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough, or I'm actually better than them, you know, envious behavior, or they start to compete with other people that are better than them. So this is like really big insights from what does Abraham tell us to do? <coughs> so... The manifestations that can happen when you're appreciating. So basically, Abraham talks about the essence of what you appreciate. When you start to appreciate something, the essence of that will flow into your reality constantly. And as you find more things to appreciate, it opens more avenues to feel appreciation for. And, and it is a chronic alignment <coughs> with the vibration seen through the eyes of source. So that sounds very promising. Because when we see through the eyes of source, we come from a place of having, we come from a place of alignment. And so we are not vibrating lack. And because of that, there's nothing that can be given to us or be taken away from us. And we can just allow other people to be, and we can just love them exactly as they are. And we can love ourselves exactly as we are. But because we're in a chronic alignment, we are really seeing the full picture we are in that peaceful place of uh, allowing everything to be and not to make it personal. So, so this is a very important slide because this was like a light like uh, eye opener for me. It says, <coughs> what happens when you have lack of self appreciation? And this is a big, big thing for all of us. Cause I think this lack of self appreciation is so, um, so hidden. It's like, but it, really really this this teaching really says it when you blame external things so other people politics the economy your health you know the, the i don't know pharmaceutical co companies when you blame external things this is the real cause <coughs> um, and the, the real cause is lack of self-appreciation when you blame external things it creates lack in those areas of your life and it creates negative things 
And because what we criticize outside us is about us, it's about the way we feel about ourselves. And <coughs> this is a very different, difficult teaching because a lot of us are so rooted in what I call the manifested reality. And we think that we're separated from other people. We feel separated from, let's say, um, our wealth. We feel separated from success. <coughs> and then we start blaming these people that are maybe not giving us jobs, not giving us assignments, or people that reject us in jobs or whatever. <coughs> so you can imagine. And this is like, you know, this teaching is turning back the mirror to us, meaning watch the Abraham videos about everything is a reflection of your vibration. Everything is in response to your vibration. And when we don't appreciate ourselves, we create the things that we don't like because it is a mirror to how we are not loving to ourselves. So again, we're coming back to self-love. So this is um, what Abraham has to say. There's so much more that Abraham said, but I wanted to really keep it concise. And I think you've already seen, you know, you've already probably realized, wow, that's a lot. <coughs> Alan. A lot for your throat as well. <laughs> Um, so I would love to talk about the science of appreciation. Um, so in the beginning, when we were uh, researching, researching appreciation, there has to be more and all we could find was a gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. And then there was a beautiful synchronicity, synchronicity that happened. And I want Angelique to talk about it for a minute because it was uh, you were the one who uh, were led to it. So can you briefly talk about that before I go on with the science of appreciation? Yeah, so basically, um you know, Ellen and I were researching thoroughly uh, appreciation and gratitude, but we couldn't find anything about appreciation. So basically, whenever we found something about appreciation, there was no science behind it. There were like, um, sort of like hypotheses that weren't backed up by science. And then one day, I just thought, I just started tuning in. <coughs> and for some reason, I had this download. So a, a block of thought that came and it said, go to HeartMath website. I said, okay, I'll go to the HeartMed website. And, and if you ever have been on the HeartMed website, you know how many papers there are. You know how many scientific papers they have, books and reports and videos and courses, and you can get lost there. I mean, they are really doing a lot of work. And so for some reason, I go into like some kind of like, I don't know, intuitive scroll of their website because there's a lot of different tabs. And I suddenly tap on this specific page. But I swear to God, my eyes are getting so worse. I actually need to wear glasses plus one. Like, and I'm not wearing them because all of these glasses look hor hor horrific on me. So I'm really vain. So I'm not wearing glasses. So literally I was on a tab and I couldn't even read it. <laughs> and I just decided, what the heck? I'm just gonna click on one of these papers and I'm just gonna buy it. And when I clicked on that specific paper, that paper was called The Appreciative Heart. And I swear to God, I couldn't read it. I, my eyes were, it was so small in print that I couldn't see it. And, and when I opened it, I was like, I immediately messaged Ellen because I knew that we are guided. And to me, this was such a beautiful example of how we are always, always, always guided. And Ellen and I have more synchronicities with, the, with our company. Um, if you look at one of our videos <coughs> on the Conscious World Club, we manifested a gamification book. When both of us were talking about gamification, there was a lot of synchronicity behind that as well. So I thought this was a beautiful, beautiful example of how when you are <coughs> in, re in receptive mode, everything falls into place. Like we were for, I think, one month looking for papers about appreciation, couldn't find it. And then it came to me like as an impulse. I went to the website, couldn't even read it, and then found the exact paper called Appreciative Heart. I mean, seriously, I don't know what the statistics are, but to me, that is divine guidance. Thank you. Thank you. And um, uh, it really is a scientific uh a document that we found and the only way I was able to uh, go through it and summarize it was by being appreciative and being in heartbreak coherence. 
Otherwise, it literally wasn't possible. So what is um, appreciation? You can think of it as um, the following words. So valuing, respect, prizing, acknowledgement, recognition, all these words um, uh, give meaning to the word um, increasing the value of, uh, of appreciation, it, but actually it increases the value of something. So I like that one the best because you literally increase the value of something. Um, Gratitude is not appreciation. This is one big thing that we intuitively knew, but really wanted proof on. And this paper really led us to uh, um, the research that shows that gratitude is not the same as appreciation. It's a part of appreciation. Appreciation goes much deeper. So it literally increases the value of something. I'm gonna say it again, because you can appreciate something. I can appreciate Angelique right now or everyone here right now, um, which I already did before uh, we started. Um, and then the value of you increases so it's just yeah i find it so mind-blowing you can actually feel it so if you appreciate yourself you actually become a better a more valuable person for yourself and for everyone else so it's almost like a responsibility in order to uh, to do to be the best version of yourself in order to be able to give more to others so um gratitude is being grateful for something that you've already received which is of course also beautiful and uh, as we will see later, both lead us to heart brain coherence. Um, 21. Uh, so it's the heart feeling behind the word and the intent that counts. Uh, you can use whichever word that uh, means something to you based on your culture, upbringing or personal preference. So it's the intent behind the word that counts. Um, if you're coming from your heart, whether you describe, describe it as gratitude or appreciation, it re represents the same spark of spirit and care and has the same effectiveness. Um, so in the research lab, whether you're radiating appreciation or gratitude, it has the same effect and the same benefits to your environment and yourself. The more you appreciate, the more you literally increase your own and others value. I can't repeat this enough. Um, so do you want to become better? I think everyone, even though if you already appreciate yourself all the time, there's always more to appreciate and there's always room for improvement and we all want to become better humans. And we want to give to the world. I think um, that's an important thing, uh, aspect of being human. Um, and do you want to have a more harmonious environment, meaning the people in your lives and even your home and your office? Appreciate, appreciate it all. Um, so appreciation, an active feeling of thankfulness or upvaluing, which has an energetic quality that uplifts one energy, one's energy and spirit. Um, so it um, makes you feel really good, which is what we do when we create heart brain coherence, if that is something that you're familiar with. Um, and uplifting that uh, spirit uh, creates a, a better human. Um, appreciation, a higher degree of coherence in the heart's rhythmic activity. So heart coherence increases cognitive performance. So you actually learn and study and perform better. Um, it creates resonance, super, here, super coherence, like into the natural state of the body, 0.1 hertz. It creates a synchronization between the parasympathetic and sympathetic branches of the autonomic nervous system. And positive emotions are key. When the body vibrates at this frequency, it results in system-wide energy efficiency and metabolic energy savings. This means there's a link between physiological efficiency and positivity, meaning improved health and longevity which is quite big. Um, optimal functioning, an aspect of appreciation or flow. Uh, it, it creates a deep sense of internal peace, uh, internal balance and peace. You'll be in harmony with yourself, with others in your larger environment. Um, you have increased buoyancy and vitality. Your senses are enlivened. Every aspect of your of perceptual experience is richer. You're invigorated even when you would usually have felt tired and drained. Things that usually would have irked you just don't get you as much. Uh, your body feels regenerated, your mind is clearer. Um, decisions become obvious as priorities clarify and inner conflict dissolves. Intuitive insight suddenly provides convenient solutions to problems that had previously consumed weeks of restless thought. Your creativity flows freely and you may experience a greater connectedness with others and feelings of deep fulfillment. 
appreciation and coherent patterns in the body. It's easier to obtain coherence for, for a longer duration when you're appreciative. So it's an easy way to, uh, uh, to access heart-brain coherence. We like the word easy. Why make it difficult if it doesn't have to be? Uh, this ensures that the coherent patterns in the neurological architecture will become familiar. This means that if you do it often, your body will naturally gravitate towards your often doing. It becomes a habit. So it's, you may lose moments, but you will naturally go back to the state of appreciation because you practice it so much. So I like this little graph because it shows how incoherent anger is and what appreciation looks like. Uh, and uh, relaxation. So I find it interesting that relaxation and appreciation are so different. Appreciation looks uh, beautiful in this graph to me. <laughs> um, is this the correct one? Yeah. Appreciation and coherence, psychophysiological coherence. So bodily systems function with a high degree of synchronization, efficiency, and harmony, and the body's natural regenerative processes appear, appear to be facilitated. Um, so your body seems to be uh, supported and be rege regenerating through this um, psychophysiological coherence, which is related to appreciation. Psychologically, this mode is associated with improved cognitive performance again. So you study better, you learn better, increased emotional stability, uh, stability things don't get to you as much, and enhanced psychosocial functioning and quality of life, you feel better. Many report experiencing a notable reduction in inner mental dialogue, that little chatter in your brain, with feelings of increased peace, self-security, and sustained positive emotions after practicing and maintaining this mode, even for short periods, such as a few days or weeks. Um, even though we may think that we're built towards positivity, um, and we may, uh, but we, in actuality, we tend to actually, as humans, have been learned to fall prey to irritation, anxiety, worry, self doubt, and blame. Um, I do think, as uh, if you look at a little baby, that we were born with positivity, but somewhere along the along our roads, we have learned to not uh, uh, be this uh, appreciative as as little babies are. We need to consciously make the effort to engage, build, and sustain positive perceptions and emotions. So we need to work at it and actually actively participate in this role we take on in our own lives of being appreciative and living a better life. These feelings are so familiar that they are a self-identity, uh, your habitual state of being, but you can change this by consciously being active in your appreciation efforts. So the inner noise generated from unmanaged mental and emotional processes consumes our energy and keeps us from functioning to our full potential. Um, positive feelings without uh, positive thinking without positive feelings doesn't work to remove emotional stress. Appreciation is one of the easiest emotions for individuals to self-induce and sustain for longer periods. Uh, we can use appreciation to create a new stable baseline in order for us to more ac easily access this in stressful times. Again, so if you have done this for a longer period, it's easy to go back to it. Positive emotion-focused techniques can thus enable individuals to effectively replace stressful thought patterns and feelings with more positive perceptions and emotions. So more effective communication and improved decision-making. I like the decision-making uh, aspect. So we're not using our brain in order to um, make decisions, but we're using are the coherence between the heart and the brain, which is created with, when you appreciate. Um, there are also benefits that extend beyond reducing stress and negative emotions in the present moment. Learning to self-regulate positive emotions with increasing consistency can give rise to long-term improvements in emotional regulation abilities, attitudes, relationships, and appreciation affects many people, many aspects of one's life. The conclusion of this research is the positive emotions feel good at the subjective level. They bolster the ability to meet life's challenges with grace and ease, optimize cognitive capacities, sustain constructive and meaningful relationships with others, foster good health, and use tools to create new behavior patterns and ensure that the new normal is that of coherence. Your body will naturally go back to what it knows. So if you've changed your patterns, it will go back to the state it has just learned, appreciation. Now you can take on a more proactive role in the orchestration of your own fulfillment because you got the power. <laughs> so 
let's talk about the appreciation game because we played it for seven days, <coughs> 40 people, and we had the download. And actually, I had download <coughs> for the whole program. I downloaded it in one night in, I think, 15 minutes, and I just wrote it out. <coughs> so we're going to launch the first appreciation game in January. And the objective is to create accountability for appreciation. <coughs> but as Abraham has said, six months will change your life. We downloaded it for six months. And each month, we focus on a specific topic. So what do we get at the appreciation game? You will have accountability, which is, I think, the, the hardest thing for a lot of people. <coughs> and um, we'll use appreciation which can be a life-changing process if you take it very seriously. We'll have weekly live calls with a teaching. <coughs> you'll be participating in a beautiful group energy and you'll have us holding the space. <coughs> Sorry. And yeah, if you look at this little list here, um, why is appreciation very, very um, groundbreaking? It's very groundbreaking because it's the opposite of these seven ways of thinking, and these ways of thinking are toxic. <coughs> and if you actually dissect your life, you find out that in any area of your life where you are struggling, you are actually devaluing yourself or others, or you're time warping, meaning you don't see, you project the past into the future, <coughs> or you're worrying about the future, or you just see the past, um, you're generalizing, you're doing catastrophic thinking, so you're just imagining the worst case scenario. You act out of urgency instead of um, really um, <coughs> taking the right time to do things. You're comparing or competing, so you don't create, you compare and you, you believe in scarcity, so you compete <coughs> and you, you see people below you are better than you, so you don't see them as equals and um, you don't even see them. <coughs> they just are like mirrors to, to actually judge yourself against. And you're very often going to victimization and blame. And if you understand these seven toxic ways of thinking, I think you would be like really flabbergasted to find out how many times you actually are in resistance because you are stuck in these seven toxic ways of thinking. And the appreciation game, when you actually play it, you're going to have to catapult yourself out of these habitual ways of being which is your identity so you might say things like <coughs> this is just who i am i'm just an emotional person or you just say you know i'm just impatient or you just say you know it's the fault of these other people that i'm not valuing them they should be different but in the world of abraham and in the world of dr joe dispenza we as conscious creators we don't blame we never ever say it's somebody else doing something to me that is creating this effect. We are at cause. We understand that we are at cause and we take that responsibility. <coughs> so it requires us to really review the way that we think about things. And so seven toxic ways of thinking and uh, you know, catching yourself in doing that will be a very huge important part of the appreciation game. You will probably break that habit as we go along. So we created the game in such a way that you can have a very, like very low investment, which is seven days per month. You can do it for one month, which is 28 days. You can do it for three months or for six months. And as you go along, you know, you'll get more and more discounts. So the more months you commit, the more you will actually um, get all these different topics and you'll be able to really have huge price savings. So, and we actually explained this as well when we launched the seven day program. Why would you play games collectively? <coughs> Playing games collectively is very interesting because you're going to create an attractor field which is compiled of the intentions of the founders of something and the people that then join in. And that, um, that attractor field with the intentions will actually manifest itself um, you'll see that the attractive field starts to work for the participants because there are 
people that are holding the same intention. So the bigger the group, the greater the attractor field. And because we're working with really high energy, we're working with appreciation, <coughs> which is alignment with source, we assume and we know that mir miracles will happen, really great shifts will happen for all participants. <coughs> and um, what will happen is that positive intentions and elevated emotions, they will just amplify. <coughs> also, a group creates community of new relationships and a sense of belonging is what people come back for and what people long for. And a lot of people don't wanna do this very hard work of changing seven toxic ways of thinking and being by themselves, actually being in a group, and you hear this in the testimonials, that, that, that really actually helps them through the difficult times of appreciation. So there's also an excitement because certain people, you know, the way that they appreciate, one person appreciates in such a different way than the other person, and we're learning from each other. And um, the shared excitement every day for seven days or 28 days per month really, really fuels your consciousness. Your consciousness just elevates. You can no longer be stuck in victim mind. It's just no way because you're just going to think, goodness, all these people, they can appreciate while this and this is happening in their life. So they're going to also, um, you know, you're also going to step up because you see other people step up and overcome themselves. <coughs> and apart from that, it's just fun because Ellen and I, we're continuously receiving downloads and we're every day <coughs> we're putting in new assignments, new little fun things, like playful things that you can do with appreciation. And um, you've probably heard of the 100 monkey effect. The progress of one member becomes the progress of the group members. So if one person has a breakthrough for, for some miraculous reason, I think it's entanglement, the other members can just tune into that type of shift and they, for them it becomes easier as well. <coughs> and we can actually say that when we play a game collectively, we're also, we're also like a mastermind. And those of you who've studied masterminds, a mastermind becomes one mind through the process called entanglement. And entanglement means that whatever energetically and in consciousness has been together, when they part, they are still together. So it seems as if we're playing this, this game online, all separately as different people. But the group that comes together creates a very specific intention and a very specific attractor field. And because of that, they start acting like one bird or flocks and they start um, being in tune with each other. And the, um, if the group intention is really high, as we have with appreciation game, this will really, really change the lives of many. And that is the intention of me and Ellen, that um, we really believe that we downloaded this game that we are vessels to actually execute this game and that we are just receiving blocks of thought and we're just facilitating it um, as vessels. And we are not trying to think about what to do. We just say, give it to us, we're ready and uh, use us. And we are in service of the transformation of a, you know, maybe a new legacy for all the people that are gonna participate that want to really um, change their lives and that say, you know what, I can go to a thousand workshops, I can go spend another 5,000 pounds on a retreat, but I need to do this work day by day. I need to do it moment by moment. It is so easy to get caught up in another online course, another book, another weekend workshop, another retreat, and <coughs> to come back and to be confronted with your own self. And those of you who do the work every day, <laughs> meditate every day, <coughs> you might journal every day. <coughs> You know that so many things become habitual. A lot of people who are participating in our group, they were doing uh, gratitude journals and actually they were saying to us that the gratitude journals were done without feeling it. They were just doing it as a chore. <coughs> Imagine that with our appreciation game, we're gonna play this absolutely in a different way, meaning you'll find ways to actually be in a state of deliberate appreciation chronically. And you have to check in three times a day. You can check it five times a day or every hour, depends on you. But minimum three times a day, a minimum per day you need to post in a forum that we're going to create. So it will allow people to really, really be um, super, super focused on monitoring their ways of being. As the research says, you need to make a, an effort to actually change 
these negative states of being. It takes effort. It will be difficult because your old self, you know, the old identity will play up and will say, this is too hard. Let's start tomorrow. I don't feel like it. <coughs> but if you're really serious about changing your consciousness and really understanding what alignment is, or what being in the receptive mode is, and what breaking the habit of being yourself is, I think the appreciation game is just one of these games that can really, really be groundbreaking. So Ellen is going to talk to us about some of the testimonials of the seven day pilot so that you know what is possible from the testimonials. Yes. And I want to say, I'm glad you um, uh, said something about it being fun because that's why we called the appreciation game a game and not a challenge because life is supposed to be fun and we love having fun and we just want to play games and we don't want to be too serious about anything anymore. And the aspect of bringing people together, we don't want to do this by ourselves anymore. We're kind of done with this whole uh, sitting in the corner with a book and studying, but we want to play and do it together with love with each other. There are so many amazing testimonials. Um, so the overall consensus uh, was uh, appreciation is powerful. Lives improved in one, uh, one uh, week. Accountability is key. Again, in a group setting, we learn from each other. We motivate each other and we create bigger results. And we get excited from reading about each other and watching the videos that people make for each other. So here's a testimonial from Michael from Germany. Learning about and feeling the difference between gratitude and appreciation. Being able to do the work and keep an elevated level of awareness of appreciation, even while being on a tough retreat. Realizing even more of what there is in my life and in life itself that I deeply embrace and appreciate. Thank you, Michael. This one is from Louise. Uh, yeah, I think. Can't see. I think it's Louise. I can't see, but I think it's Louise. I thought I was a positive thinker, but being part of the group and constantly reading everyone appreciating made me realize how quickly I fell back into my old thinking programs. It really made me look for things to appreciate, not just for the first hour of my day, but all day long. Finally, that brought me into the realization that it is actually a decision that you make to stay in a vibration of appreciation. Decision. Seven days made it start to become a habit. Being a part of the group was very important. Reading how others were doing really lifted you up. I was focusing much more on how to stay in the vortex during the day and connect into life. This one's from Matthias in Germany. Even after the seven days, I'm still following this habit of just enjoying little things, nature and random people around me. Posts of other people inspired me to look at appreciation from different perspectives. I would recommend the appreciation game for everyone who wants to apply more consistency, sincerity, and meaning to their spiritual life. Thank you, Matthias. I copied the emotional scale, uh, which we added, shared in the appreciation game, uh, and have it as my screensaver and on my fridge. I look at it every day and figure out where I am and have my kids do it too. Children can play. The game made me more conscious. There's a ton of added value with the group because it was a place to check in every day and get experience and hope from others as well as responses to whatever I posted. I knew I had to do it because there was a group. I don't think I would get the same results without the group because some of the posts were what moved me the most. I would recommend the game to anyone who is trying to live a more deliberate and joyful life. From Abby in the USA. Thank you, Ellen. Thank so you. we're going, we're going to start the appreciation game about one of the most difficult areas in our lives, which is, I think, work, career, money, and business. And we're going to start the 6th of February because, sorry, it should be the starts January the 6th. Yeah, I, I think I made a mistake here. We didn't see it. It's, uh, it starts 6th of January, not February. February is the next game. So start of 6th of January. We're going to look at an area where people are always setting big goals. You know, every year people are setting big goals. This year I'm going to crush it. This year I'm going to bring my business to the next level. And then, you know, I think there is a really de the most depressing day in January somewhere. I don't know which day, day it is, but there's a day where people realize all my positive resolutions. They're not going to happen because I already gave up on myself. <coughs> so that's why 
we chose this specific theme as the theme for January. So you can play it for seven days or you can play it for 28 days. And when you play it for seven days, you get a little bit of a snapshot of how we play the game. <coughs> and then you can upgrade to the 28 day game. <coughs> so imagine that we start with appreciating yourself in your career, because I think whenever we don't feel successful, it is because we are devaluing ourselves and we are comparing and competing with others. And, um, and so there's a lot of negative patterns that happen when we are developing ourselves and we are <coughs> seeing ourselves in competition with others instead of seeing you know, reality through the eyes of source. Um, in the, se the second, third, and fourth week, we will be going to appreciation of others in your work, business, and career. And for everybody, this will be a different topic. But for me, definitely, I know that for many, many years, <coughs> I was um, in a victim mode regarding others in business and career. I was always projecting my own limiting thoughts on others, like, for instance, nobody wants to pay for healing or nobody wants to pay for, you know, uh, everybody wants a discount, you know, or there is no work for my profession. <coughs> Can you imagine that um, <coughs> these thoughts are quite going to create results that you don't really want? And so what would happen if you would start appreciating those others? If you see them through the eyes of source, instead of <coughs> going about with the lenses of the past, see them through the eyes of source. In the third week, how about your life path? You know, all of us have a life path. And very often we give up on our life path. We're not creating, we're just stuck in survival. We're just living from a state of survival. How about you start connecting the dots of your life path and you start seeing that <coughs> your business can be an expression of your life path. It can be a beautiful, beautiful expression. And the fourth week, we're going to look at your vortex. What is vibrationally aligned in your vortex? So, <coughs> so can you imagine that if you do this for 28 days, you're going to do chronic appreciation of this specific topic in the beginning of January, and we're going to do it in four different weeks with a different focus every week, you have to shift things. Things will have to shift, but you will be challenged. And we don't want to call it a challenge. We want you to be playful with the so-called challenge because that is what we're all about. So six months came and this was downloaded. It just came to me as like, this is what you're gonna do. And I said, okay, I'm just gonna write it down. <coughs> January is money, business, and career. Uh, February is the beautiful, depressing month of Valentine's. And so we're going to uh, look at relationships. And in this case, we're going to look at something which is so contrary to how we normally look at relationships or normally look at life, which is called the best case scenario type of perception. Very often, this was inspired by Mike Budon Beckwith. A lot of us actually practice chronically worst case scenario. <coughs> and our mind is trying to keep us in survival. Our mind wants to keep us alive. So <coughs> it's always warning us, hey, hey <coughs> be careful. So the worst case scenario is what our body is conditioned to. And it's what our fight or flight system will give us. But how much can we practice ourselves to be chronically in the best case scenario thinking and specifically in the area of relationships? This could be the relationship with yourself, relationship with your vortex, relationship with source, relationship with money, your business partners, whatever it is, your ex-wife, your kids. <coughs> so it's going to be transformational. I now uh, really very often challenge myself because it is a challenge to think best case scenario. I have to tell you, thinking is something different and feeling it, but appreciating that there is a potential for best case scenario. Imagine what that would do if you would do that for 28 days or even for seven days in February. <coughs> so in the, in the third month, March, 
and imagine that you don't have to play all the games. So you could just see one specific topic and anything I want to be in that specific month because that is my challenge. Um, so it could be, for instance, the third month, which is March. And um, March is infinite possibilities. And we all hear this, infinite possibilities. But a lot of us are hypnotized by appearance, the appearance of the 3D reality. And appearance is a teaching from the science of getting rich, chapter four. <coughs> it's also a teaching, very important teaching in, um, in uh, what I, um, the, um, uh, the Course in Miracles. And we are so hypnotized by appearance. We believe that material reality is real. Actually, material reality is just a manifestation of our current chronic patterns of, of relating to the world, how we see the world, how we react to the world out of programs and out of conditioned selves and survival. And so imagine that for infinite possibilities, we really have to turn it around. We have to start seeing everything as infinite possibilities and bypass the illusion of the appearance in, three, in the 3D world. The fourth month, we're going to practice seeing through the eyes of source. And I, um, I can imagine that that will be a challenge, um, but that, you know, we will explain what we'll do. <coughs> month five, May, we're going to teach you how to download. Ellen and I do this naturally now, but it, you know, it didn't come through us naturally. We started doing it actually without knowing it. And then we started realizing that that's what we're doing. And then we started realizing that this is, a, this is something that everybody can learn. But imagine that you are going to, instead of going into your analytical mind, you start just lo looking for guidance or you receive guidance all the time about every topic, about difficult topics, about decision making, about conflict, about you know, things that are very difficult in your life. <coughs> and imagine that you'll have a lot of synchronicities when you start trusting the guidance, because that is it. We probably receive guidance already, but do we trust it? No, we have our little mind here talking to us and we very often listen to that mind. We obey that little voice, yeah? So may we're going to really practice really tuning out and in of the guidance versus the chatterbox, which is our mind. <coughs> Six month June, we're going to practice living in a state of creation, which is the complete opposite of living in a state of survival. Dr. Joe Dispenza teaches us that we are conditioned to live in a state of survival. And living in a state of survival creates more of the same results that we don't like. So that to me, that's actually my main intent for my whole life is to be in a state of creation and to really know that everything is possible and to have no resistance to all the desires that I have in my life. <coughs> so you can see here, so every month we have another, you know, another uh, thing. So really um, month five is really about um, emotional mastery. And month six is about be a cooperative component. And those of you who really know Abraham, you know that Abraham is really talking about that we are not the cooperative component. And, and that's why, the cooperative components are probably already there, but we are not a cooperative component. We are in the way. We are not doing the work. We are not aligned. So if, you, if this resonates with you, you are taking responsibility and you probably have seen a lot of shifts in your life where you're no longer in victimhood. You're no longer blaming other people. You just said, it's me, it's me. Just like Esther Hicks says, I did that when she has a nice manifestation. When she has a terrible manifestation, she also says, I did that. And I think to be adults, to be spiritual conscious and to be responsible, we have to take on that self-mastery and we have to take on the challenging work of actually breaking the habit of being herself moment to moment. And the six month challenge is just one way of doing it. So. So basically, um, again, when we go to January, we're really going to delve very deep into the teaching of what are you doing? Are you taking action, mindless action from all the, the false paradigms out in the world that you have to just take action and work super hard, struggle and effort, and you're going to be successful? Or are you going to master yourself to be vibrationally productive? And to be vibrationally productive means that you have to be aligned. You have to be in 
um, in the receptive mode most of the time. And then you will know instead of doing the work for 100 hours, you could do the work in one hour. You could call one person instead of call a thousand people and you will get the same result or have even better results. And I think it's really important that we start to see that, you know, um, there's so many habits that we have in the 3D world that defy the universal laws. And that is what we're going to teach us as a group to really break these habits um, every month and to really, really have fun with it as a group. So, um, so basically in the second month, every month we're going to work with a process. So in the second month, so I see a process as something that Abraham Hicks has taught us or maybe another teacher will have taught us. But because we are lazy, yeah, we have lazy focus, we have lazy habits, we are not going to do the work. But actually, when we're in the appreciation game, you're going to create accountability for yourself to actually do the work that really helps you get the result, which is you're going to align first and then you're going to be a cooperative component. You are going to get out of the way. And so what does it mean um, in the second month? We will do a lot of pre-paving, we'll do a lot of visioneering, and we'll do a lot of grid work. <coughs> the grid work is fantastic, it's beautiful. I, I've had huge breakthroughs doing grid work. I've had huge results doing pre-paving as well. So it's really fun. But it's even more fun when you do it with a group and when you actually have to do it because you realize that you're not going to do it by yourself. You're going to get so busy that that's the last thing you're going to do. You're just going to get busy in your life instead of a line and then take that inspired action. So the third month, infinite possibilities, we're going to practice living in ease and to surrender the outcome <coughs> and to really let go of the how, which is a huge thing that our analytical mind is always torturing us with. How, 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 how? You know, you don't have to know the how. How is not our business. But how often do we struggle with the how? So in the third month, we're really going to get deep in that little habit of the how, how we get stuck in the how, and we're going to start creating with ease, and we're going to force ourselves to really start to play with ease and play with surrender, and also um, become the magnet. Instead of going to the vortex, we become the vortex, which is a Dr. Joe Dispenza teaching. Yeah, it was a beautiful, beautiful teaching. So the fourth month, we're, only, we're really going to look at this really difficult um, thing, which I call self-honoring and self-knowledge. And this is about transcending victim and lack consciousness. Imagine that that is a huge topic for everybody. And you, know, you will have one area in your life where you're struggling and you're acting more like a victim than a creator. You're coming a lot from lack and not from um, prosperity consciousness. And you're also not honoring yourself because you're not identifying with source. You're identifying with a, a victim, a human being that has no power. And you know, those of you who have watched the uh, Abraham Hicks Amsterdam webinar that we ran <coughs> after the Amsterdam workshop this year, you will know that Abraham is really, really all about us. We have to forget that we are human beings. We have to align with source. We have the predominant um, characteristics of source within us, but because we've been conditioned as a human being, we forget that we are source. And those of you who study Ramta or who study, you know, maybe somebody, uh, the master key, the, the teachers of the master key, um, you'll know that, you know, at Lester Levinson and Release Techniques, Sedona Method, you know, all of these teachers tell us that we are masters, we are gods, we are divine. <coughs> and so, and in divine mind, we are not going to think ourselves sick. We are not going to think ourselves poor and we're not going to think little of ourselves. We're going to honor ourselves. <coughs> so fifth month, emotional mastery, we're, as I said before, we're going to really tune into our guidance. We're going to make that a huge program where you're going to trust your guidance and you're going to see what happens. You're going to have fun with it. Instead of walking around in your programs, and um, listening to your programs, you're gonna recognize downloads because you're gonna be tuning into them. <coughs> and um, the sixth month, where living in a state of creation actually means that you become an instrument of higher consciousness because when you are living in a state of creation, you become, <coughs> as we said, <coughs> um, a cooperative component. And when you're a cooperative component, 
you are a cooperative component for a big game, yeah? So the game that you try to play with your little ego, trying to manifest little goals with your ego, suddenly you surrender that and you surrender your life to the divine and you go to what Michael Barnard Beckwith calls the third stage of creation, which is you are going to let the divine work through you instead of you trying to manifest little goals. You suddenly realize you are part of a much bigger game, a much bigger game plan. And that's what we're going to do as the conclusion of the, um, the appreciation game, the six month. So I think this is really, really exciting. And I downloaded this in 15 minutes, guys. I really, I sat behind a PowerPoint and I just said, give it to me. And it just came to me. So there's a lot of things that we could talk about, you know? So there's really, really a lot of things that we're going to cover each month. So, but how can you do it? You can actually, um, you can just uh, uh, play it for seven days. And that is like 99 um, euros, X VAT, excluding VAT. <coughs> you can, um, you can really find out what that is about. <coughs> so I think there's a, this is a typo. This is, um, Ellen, is it, can you tell me what the price is here? Because I think you worked on this slide. 279. 279, okay. I don't know why this plus is here. So it's 279 for one month, which is under 10 euros a day. And imagine that for 279 a month, you would be going maybe three hours to a therapist. Some therapists cost 150. The very good ones that I work with are 150. Some of them are 300 an hour. So <coughs> imagine that for 279, um, you're going to have accountability, group dynamics, and entanglement with an amazing group. And you're gonna have four teachings a week and accountability every day in a group setting. So we're not talking about Monday to Friday, we're talking about seven days a week that we have to play the game. You're gonna up-level your consciousness. You can play it for three months, this game with us. Um, and so of course the seven day you can play every month. Um, you can just, just say, actually, I wanna play in the sixth month or I wanna play in the, one, the, the first month or the third month. Um, so you can really have a snapshot of what we're doing. You can just play one month or you can say, I actually wanna come into the whole six months. And then you get a huge discount. You get it like it goes from 14 to 14 per day to 660 per day. All these beautiful numbers. You know, is it coincident? I don't think so. <coughs> so, <coughs> so for 660 a day, you're going to have your life transformed. Yeah, because you're no longer playing small and you're no longer indulging in those toxic habits of your seven toxic ways of thinking. You're going to really, really train yourself deliberately every day to play on a higher level, to create on a higher level, to think and perceive and live from, um, from alignment with source because that is your commitment. If you wanna play three months, it's gonna be 770 a day. <coughs> That's not a lot of money if you're gonna transform your whole life. So, um, so but what we wanna to offer tonight is because we really believe that it should be so um, low, inv low investment to try it out as possible. And so the participants in the pilot, the 40 beautiful souls that we had in our pilot, you, some of you already gave us testimonials. So you're already getting the 50% um, uh, offer for the first month. <coughs> and also the, the first 100 people are going to be affiliates of our program. So we're gonna design an affiliate scheme for you. Maybe we'll extend it, but we want the founding members to be affiliates of our program. So we'll create a referrals link so that you can also earn money when you bring in people. Could be your, you know, people that you love that you think should be in the game. <coughs> and um, um, for other people, the new people, if you wanna join, the first month you can, you know, whichever first month is the first month for you, you will get the game for 50% off if you, if you are going to give us a testimonial. So that I think is a very low investment. So that will be 50% of 279, so that's 140, <coughs> excluding VAT, that's Euro. So, so um, yeah, so maintain momentum, uh, it, go into a new topic every, every month or every week, even every day, because we're gonna get downloads and your whole life will change in six months if you play it full out. 
So this was the end. I'm so sorry for my coughing. I did everything I tried to heal myself, but this is where I, ha I, I have a little program that I can't heal myself with this. So I, I apologize. Um, Ellen, what would you like to say? That I appreciate your cute cough. <laughs> I hate my cough. Maybe that's it. I resist my cough. <laughs> yeah. Your cough is perfect. Uh, I think everyone being here was, uh, I felt your energy and it was amazing. Thank you for being here. I appreciate every single one of you. I had so much fun being on this uh, call with you, Angelique, and to talk about this because I feel like we've been brewing this for a while and it just feels so loving and I just love it and I love you all and I want to thank you for being here. Can you please tell people how they can sign up for the offer? Yeah, um, <laughs> we will um, post a link in the group where you found this or in the email where you um, uh, you received it from in the Eventbrite. So we're going to send an email to all those email addresses and in all the groups that you're in. So, so we'll yeah, so we'll send you a link that you can register for free for that you want to partake. Um, you don't have to make a decision. You can say, I want to receive the offer for the first month. And then uh, we'll send you the, the payment details. And, um, and um, you can also ask us questions, of course, and we'll be able to answer them. But I really believe that this is going to be quite life changing. And we might have a Q&A before we launch the game so that people can ask us questions. Um, we had a load, like loads and loads of like, I think, I don't know, many, many testimonials for uh, the appreciation, appreciation game, the seven day one. Um, but you can imagine we really went in depth to actually um, working with this appreciation. We're not do doing superficial appreciation. The appreciation game that we downloaded is going to transform your life in many ways. And you can, um, <coughs> you can turn around probably many areas in your life. And I can tell you that um, for me and Ellen, uh, we, we ourselves, we started doing appreciation definitely for areas of our life that were very challenging. And I can tell you that I, I'm st I've started turning around many areas in my life where I was stuck for years. And so um, just doing appreciation for one month can really turn around your life in a specific area. So it could be your business, it could be relationship, it could be, you know, I don't know, it could be your health. Um, but I think, um, you know, from my own experience, I would never do something if I didn't see the results in my own life. And so I really can see that once I started appreciating one of my businesses, I, I, got, I got out of victimhood. I stopped the seven toxic ways of thinking and I just started thinking best case scenario, uh, best case scenario and infinite possibilities. And I started seeing everything is possible. And guess what? My business in November had an uplift of 450%. And we're now in, fe in, in, in uh, December and my business right now, and it's not even the end of the month, I'm already on, um, you know, like 200% uh, above what I normally, what normally my, my volume is or my sales are. So <coughs> I can just say, you know, I was stuck in not valuing my business for a long time and just being stuck in um, just facing 3D reality. I was just facing the appearance of what I thought was my sentence to being unsuccessful in the business that I wanted to be successful in. And I really think, you know, me speaking from all my failures, I am going to be an amazing teacher because I am really honest and open about everything that ever went wrong in my life. And that's a lot of areas in my life that went wrong and I turned them around. So I think, you know, uh, because I am so passionate about this and Ellen and I are so aligned in, we take responsibility, we want to be the scientists and we are vessels. You're going to have an amazing time when you want to know more about the game. So with the link, you know, um, you can also just require, um, inquire for uh, more information. Um, <coughs> um, hopefully we'll upload this webinar so that you can watch it again. And hopefully we'll hear from you. What if any questions? I want to thank you for being here. I honor you for being here. I appreciate you for being in my life and for following us. And uh, if you have any feedback, please um, pri private message us. Okay. I see a lot of people here that were in the appreci appreci appreciation game pilot. Thank you so much for playing along with us. 
we, we felt so much love every day when we read all your posts. So Ellen, last words. Thank you and have a good night. Thank you. Have a good night. Lots of love. Bye-bye.